The day this video goes live should be the day I'm actually getting surgery. So forgive me if I'm not in the comments after it goes live, but I promise my husband will update on the surgery as soon as he can. Hi everybody, today I am going to be sharing with you my planner setup for the second half of 2019 and hopefully the first half of 2020 if everything goes well. Although I've made these videos in the past and that's not usually how it winds up looking. I think doing these videos every six months instead of every year for me is a little bit more accurate because sometimes things can change. Even if the main things don't change, the supplemental things sometimes do. I actually was inspired to make this video from a comment on one of my recent videos from Nancy Michelle who asked me to make a video on my planner setup as a whole as I've been doing various videos on each planner but I haven't done kind of a like all together review of everything so I was like okay sure since I am going to be out recovering from my surgery and actually the day this video goes live should be the day I'm actually getting surgery so forgive me if I'm not in the comments after it goes live but I promise my husband will update on the surgery as soon as he can on Facebook and Instagram or wherever the case may be. He'll update somewhere and the updates will get around. Anyway, moving forward. So this is my setup. There is only one real change to the, the planners I am using from the beginning of this year in terms of the planners I was using at the start of the year. And it's not really a planner, it's more of a tracker slash memory keeper, but we'll go into it. And the first thing is actually not any of these. The first thing is my Google Calendar. I utilize my Google Calendar for all of my future planning. I actually have multiple Google Calendars. I have one I share with my family that has all of our appointments on it. I know some people like to have individual calendars for each person so they can color code them. Because I have so many other calendars for work and things like that, I actually decided just one family calendar and the way that we actually separate things and show whose thing is what is we just put whoever's name it is first like so cindy dr Dijani, if i have an appointment or katie and rj dentist appointment whatever the case may be it has our names first and then the actual thing so that's for our whole family and all four of us have access to it then there is a custody calendar that my husband and i have access to that just shows when we have the kids so that we can plan either around when they're here or when they're not here. I have multiple work calendars to plan out my patron stuff, my editorial calendar, my filming schedule, my freelance work, and so on and so forth. And so that's how I get ahead in my planning. That's where I put all my appointments. And the reason I like doing this is because then I can just bring my phone with me and drop a doctor's appointment into my phone. And then I take that information and put it into my planners when I'm actually sitting down to look at my week. So this is mostly my looking forward. Some weeks I will actually go and block in some specific time as in like appointments for myself like for example when I've been working on the book I have gone through and put in blocks of time on various days saying this day I'm going to spend three hours in the book and treat it like an appointment so that I can make sure I see how I'm going to work on the book all month as opposed to just sort of willy-nilly working on it but I don't do that all the time. I only do that for certain things where I really need to plan out when each piece of like to break down a bigger project. So then we have my actual planning. Now, instead of going through these biggest to smallest, which is how these are organized, I'm going to go through them in the way I use them. Monthly, I utilize my power sheets. Now I have all of my appointments and all of my planning, future planning on the Google calendar. My power sheets are where I think about my goal setting for the year. And these are kind of holistic goals. These aren't like business goals. There are business goals, but they're in more of a like finding balance with work goals. Now, when it comes to how I actually set and do goals for my business. I'm not actually great at that right now. I wanted this year to take the focus off of that because I found when I put the focus on getting X number of subscribers or X number of money or X number of whatever, I would get demotivated and stressed out because of that. This is actually looking at my life as a whole and this has been a lot more helpful to me this year and I have made some pretty great strides in my business as well as my life by taking the focus off of those things. But that doesn't mean I'm not gonna sit down. Quarterly, I do take a look at all of the stuff going on in my work life and try and strategize. But in terms of setting goals, I haven't quite figured that out yet. But this is my, my monthly goal setting. So I'll go into here every month. I have a whole playlist. I'll link it up above in the cards. Each month set up and then a review and how I've done all of this. So this is where I'm at currently 
in July as of the filming of this video. So I go into here, I do this, and then I check this almost every day. Ideally every day, but not always. So when I go into here, this kind of gives me my direction, like the bigger picture things that I need to be working on monthly, weekly, and daily. And then I take those things as well as the appointments and all of the like more practical shit that's on my calendar. And I take those things and those go into my planners. Now this is my weekly planner basically, although there are some monthly things. Monthly, I use this, I've been using this for pain tracking. I use these Chrissy Ann Designs transparent stickers to mark whether I take a painkiller, whether it was a bad day or whether it was an okay day. And then I have been using the monthly calendar for meal planning for a month. And what I've been doing so far is I plan it out with these like little post-it notes. And then as each week comes up, I review it and write it in and it's been working okay so far. We haven't been completely consistent because I found with my meal planning, when it comes to the weeks I don't have my kids, it's not always consistent, although it's been more consistent this time around. And then I go in to my weekly planning, and this is where I'm at currently. I've just got these two weeks so far, and I use these weeks to strategize for my whole week what I want it to look like. So how much time I wanna spend each day. I don't actually think about this in terms of like hourly blocks. Instead, what I think about this as is like amount of time because I, I have kidney disease, I have chronic pain, and the problem I run into is that if I decide I want to spend X number of hours working on my book in a day, and then my cat uses my kidney as a jumping off point, which is what happened on Monday, I may not be able to spend X number of hours. I may only be able to spend one hour. But if I only have one hour or two hours of good time before I need to take a break, then if I made books super big, then in that couple of hours of good time that I've got, I need to spend the majority of it on the book. So it's a visual kind of idea of prioritizing, which may be a little extra. I feel like it can be a little extra, but I really enjoy this process. It brings me back to my planner. It brings me back to strategizing every week instead of just flying by the seat of my pants. The fun and the frou-frou shit is what motivates me to come back to it. And the bonus is that I actually spend some time thinking about my week. So that's important. The other things I track in here are my weather and my blood pressure. And those are the things that I actually track using this planner. So this planner overall is now used for pain tracking, blood pressure tracking, meal planning, and then weekly strategizing, as well as some like other things here and there. I actually spend some time like a little bit pre-planning the week before I do this, which is kind of a byproduct of filming plan with me videos. It wasn't something I did until I started filming plan with me videos. If you would like a video on my pre-planning process on how I actually approach all of this at the beginning of each week. I usually have a list. You guys usually see it for a hot minute during a plan with me or a live plan with me. But how I come up with that list, I actually had a patron ask me about it and I explained it in one of my on my one of my most recent feedback posts. She asked me to explain my process. If you'd ever like me to make a video on it, please let me know in the comments. It feels a little extra, so I don't really show it very often, but it helps me kind of, I have a major scatterbrain that helps me sort of rein everything in and get everything sort of focused so that I can sit down and really think constructively about my week instead of just being all willy nilly and like balls flying in my face because that's basically what happens on the regular. Then we go to my bullet journal. In a perfect world, if I wasn't lazy, I could use this for almost everything I'm doing in these other planners. However, I like structure. I talked about this before and I've mentioned this in comments. The structure of like this hourly week where it gives you like the, the setup and everything, you know, or the questions and the power sheets. I like being able to work within a framework and I am way too damn lazy to draw it in myself. So I don't usually do that. My bullet journal at the heart of it is a list keeper. If this is how I strategize where my time is going to go, then this is where I break down that time and those projects into the actual tasks that need to be accomplished. That's the heart of it. That's really what this is for me more than anything else is a list and it can look very different. Some of my lists look all nice and cute like this. And then the week, this week where I'm getting ready to prepare for surgery, my lists are a lot more just scribbled in, but this is just where I break down my projects and check them off and get them done. I also use this for my challenges like lettering and doodling. Sometimes I will throw in pictures for memory keeping. I did that here from our weekend out. Sometimes I'll put swatches in here. If you notice here, I haven't actually done much of any, this is my doodle challenge for the month and some of my lettering. I haven't done any of that this month because I've been too stressed out, but normally I will put my lettering in here. And then the final thing that I'm using is this new puppy and I'm calling this my wellness tracker. Now, 
I want to I want to make a couple things clear about this planner. First of all, it's not a planner for me. I'm not planning how I'm going to do my wellness because at least right now with the surgery and everything else, I don't fucking have time for that. Basically what I'm doing is taking the goals from my power sheets. If these are the goals, most of the goals in these guys have to do with work and with like practical getting shit done. And this is for my mental and physical well-being. I have like eight overarching goals in my power sheets and about five of them make appearances in this planner. Whether it's about my physical health and well-being, my family's relationship with each other, my relationship with my husband, balance in my work life, or having a quiet space that I like having quiet space in my life, all of those things, even having an environment I'm proud of, all of these things contribute to how I feel on a daily basis. And as somebody with chronic illness, physically, I feel like shit most of the time. So I'm trying to make it so that mentally at the very least, maybe I feel a little bit better. So that's what this is. This is a way to document that, to look back on the good, the bad days. If my pain tracker is a way to look at how many painkillers I've taken, this is to look at good and bad days at a snapshot. That's my hope not to plan it out. I'm not trying to lose a specific amount of weight. Losing weight would be great, but I'm not focusing on that. And even though I'm trying to try new recipes and meal plan and everything like that, this is just, again, a record of how I've been feeling, kind of like a photo diary. So, you know, it may evolve into me like, ex like I'm ex trying to walk more and whatever the case may be, but I'm not taking pictures of myself like then and now because I have a fucking kidney belly and it's never going to look great until they take my kidneys out. So... I'm not worried about that. But anyway, I'll show you here though. Like I've been using the monthly calendar thus far to write down just like a, a memory, something happy for each day. It could be something as small as, you know, we took a trip to the Home Depot as grown ups to buy stuff for our kitchen. And it just, it was nice to be out to our six year anniversary on Monday. But then this is the first week and how it came out. I know some of you were curious about it. Instead of a positive word, I'm just putting a cuss word I like. I'm just adding pictures. They could be anything from like shopping for healthy food and the meals that I cooked and exercising to drinking water. And then this next week so far, um, I actually put this TV here because my um, father-in-law sent it to us as an anniversary gift. And it was the only picture I took to really commemorate that it was our anniversary because, um, we spent most of the day working. And then this is the new chair that I bought, which is so much better for my back, which I consider to be part of wellness. But as you can see, like I'm I'm starting to just document things. That's that's kind of what I'm using this for, is a, a way to document my headspace and my physical space each day and how I'm feeling and where I'm going. And by doing it this way, the focus is not on trying to lose weight or trying to eat healthier or trying to exercise more. It's not any of those things to obsess over. It's an overall picture of my outlook on life, how I'm doing so that I can take care of myself physically and mentally, because those are both really important, especially as I'm cruising towards kidney failure, hopefully getting a transplant, getting fistula surgery. All these things are really fucking scary and they're really stressful. And this is a way to just be able to say, you know what? I might be stressed out. I might be two weeks out from surgery, but I still went and walked around the track a few times. Or, you know, I'm stressed out finishing the book this week, but the kitty sat on my lap for a few minutes and it made me feel better. You know, it just, it gives me that to look back on. So that's how I'm using this. And I, I thought I'd explain that because I'm not sure how well I explained it in the initial video. And my understanding of what this is morphing into has kind of grown over the past week as I've been using it. Now, of course, I still have a lot more time to work on this planner, so it may evolve again. But for now, this is sort of, if anything, this is like the diary if these, if these are the things to help me plan and execute, then this is the memory. I also use Trello to break down projects as well into tasks. I don't use it all the time, but I do use it occasionally when it comes to big videos. But for the most part, this is my system. I hope that this helped you out a little bit. I'd love to hear about your systems in the comments. If I had to strip away all of this shit, I would keep my Google Calendar and the bullet journal for making lists, but I don't wanna do that because this is the most fun out of all of this. This is probably the most practical thing that I not. If we take the Google calendar out of the equation, this is my most practical planner. This is my most fun planner. This is my most helpful planner in terms of my whole year. And this one is, I think the one that's the most necessary for me right now. It's not the one I feel the most comfortable with. It's not the most fun. It's not the one I have gotten into a good habit yet with, but I think this one has the potential to be the most necessary to my well-being over the course of the year. 
Anyway, I'd love to hear about your system in the comments below, so please let us know. And if you think that using all these planners is whack as fuck, you can tell me that too. Just be nice about it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video.